apparently not that I know of, because, I mean, if you haven't gotten the back from me, I've done all the corrections grading, so. Oh, so if you set this equal to zero, you'll get the x-intercept. Yeah. And then you can approach negative 2 plus that, do a put in the calculator, and it should be about where those hit the x axis. Yeah, sure. And one last thing about the test. When I say find intercepts, and you find the y-intercept, that's singular, doesn't match my question. So when I say find the intercepts, that means find the y-intercept and the x-intercepts. And, and more than likely, it means by hand, not from the calculator, right? <laughs> when in doubt, do the work. I always say when in doubt. I didn't say it, I stopped. <laughs> It sounds like you ever watched Science Songs? Oh, it's like he took it. He did what? All right. Yeah. No, it doesn't work. Okay. So today, let's get into chapter four. Yeah. Do what? I think before you mentioned splitting one test into two quizzes. All right. So, do we have any more tests except for the final exam? No. No. We have a quiz on next Tuesday, Tuesday. and then the next thing we have is the final, final. final. kick ass. So the last test is not going to happen. I'm going to spread that percentage across, and I'm going to add five percent of that percentage onto your highest test grade. To make it fair. Sorry? <laughs> so there's no no test for the quiz on Tuesday and then the final. Okay. It's, yeah. I put it on both the syllabus and the homework sheet. So you know. Yeah, not the lowest that's over you. The uh, the quiz is the quiz. The quiz coming out that can still be up by your final, just like all the other quizzes. No. Uh, you said you know, people who miss quizzes. Yeah, well, if you miss a quiz, I'll put the final grade there. But the final is. Uh, all encompassing, so, so the quiz I, I could do that. Yeah, that's know. all I'm saying. That's fine. Okay, so it's the same way as the other quiz. I mean, if you do better on the final than this next quiz, then you deserve the quiz to go up. Why not? So final's gonna be hard. No, I'm joking. <laughs> final's hard. Well, if it's anything like this last one, yes. Oh, um, so since you're adding 5% to our highest test grade, would it still have the effect if you added to the lowest test grade? Or? Why would you want it the lowest? Why would I, yeah. I, it's just a question. No, no, no. I, I, so, I, <laughs> so how do you do average? To make it fair, since we're losing a grade, I wanted to do that to try to make it a little more fair. You with me? Because you actually want more grades, right? Yeah. I don't know if you realize this. You want more grades. You want more graded things. I took a class where the only grade was the oral final exam. That was it. <laughs> they put us in rooms, they gave us a problem, and then they walked around, and the girl in the room next to me had a nervous breakdown. And I'm trying to do my work, and she's, oh my god! <laughs> I'm like, no! That was good times, good times. <laughs> that wasn't necessarily the takeaway from that, but sure. Alright, alright. Anything else to get out before we get into chapter 14? Good, alright. Thought you guys were going to band together and just not let that happen. It's too late for that. What? Too bad. Too late for what? I have another question about the test. See me after. <laughs> I try. Oh. <laughs> Alright. You're going to love this notation. You ready? No. Oh, fuck. It's not that. Bomb. 
I like that range of range of reactions. All this is now personally, I kind of I actually hate this notation. Just to let you know, uh, what this really means and what makes more sense is this is f of g of x. So what's another way to say that? If I had two functions, f of x and g of x, what is this asking me to do? Multiply. No. Plug in. Plug in. Right? This does not mean f times. This is f of g of x. So what would I plug into f? I would plug the whole g function. You with me? So for example, if I had f of x, x squared minus 2, g of x is 3 minus x. What is f of g of x? Which the book will say f, will say fog, which is what students feel like they're in. Fog of x, but that just means f of g of x. Just plug g into f. That's all it means. Right. So that means where you see x squared minus 2, you throw. So what am I going to put into f? What is g? g is 3 minus x. Minus x. That was neat. Somebody just came in. I thought it was your entrance music. That was <laughs> you, you have me? G of X is this. So what am I going to put in F? I'm going to put this. So real quick, before we try that out, can you guys remind me? Remind me. What is F of 2? How do you do F of 2? 2 squared minus 2. Yeah, you just plug a 2 in. Right? So f of 2 is 2 squared minus 2, which is 2, a bunch of 2's. What is f of w? Put a w in, w squared minus 2. So what is f of 3 minus x? 3 minus x squared. Yeah, the whole thing, 3 minus x squared minus 2. I mean, the function notation is so single-minded, it just says whatever's in there, put it in. Just plug it in. In place of x, you put what's in there. That's all it means, right? Don't let it mean any more than that. And then how would you kind of simplify that? Just, how would you simplify that in purple? Square it out. Foil it out, you subtract two, right? So if you foil it out, you get nine minus three minus three. You get seven minus six x plus x squared. <laughs> Turn it around if you want to do that. You guys kind of with? so this is nothing new at all. When we did function notation, I actually shot a few things like f of h. I shot some of that stuff at you. This is the same thing. You guys look really happy. Okay, let's try another. Yes, the goof, the fog and the goof. What? So this would look like G of F of X. That's what that would look like using that composition notation. That's one thing I wish we would just get rid of. It's unnecessary. Because this is more, it makes more sense. Plug F into G, that's what that says. So real quick, just help you along. What am I plugging into G? Square root of 5x minus 1, right? That's that's what f of x is. x minus 1, you just plug it in place of x. So I'm going to take that, fun what this says is take that function and plug it into g. That's what that says, right? Take f, plug it inside of g, because where is f? It's inside of freaking g. So exactly what the symbol looks like is what it's asking you to do. 
So plug F into G, and you get root 5x minus 1 squared plus 2. And what's root 5x minus 1 squared? 5x minus 1. So I get 5x plus 1 at the end. Is that cool? Don't worry too much about absolute values and stuff. We'll just assume it's all positive for right now, just to get the idea. So the squares cancel now? Yeah, what's the square root and the square do to each other? <coughs> yeah, they're opposite functions, right? So they cancel each other out. Yes? So why wouldn't it be the square root of 5x minus 1 times x squared plus 2? To get that, I would have to have f of x times g of x, which is also known as f times g of x. That's not what this is asking. This is not asking what's f of x times g of x. This is asking what is f of g of x. And what's the basic definition of function notation? Whatever is here, you plug it into this dude. That's the basic definition, right? So this does not mean multiply. The same way that f of 2 does not mean 2f. Yay, right? That doesn't mean f times 2. That means f of 2. Plug 2 in like we did earlier. Just because the inside is not a number now, it's some x thing, the process doesn't give a shit what's in there. It just says whatever's in there, plug it in. Whatever the hell it is. Yeah? Um, on the very bottom, it says 5x minus 1 plus 2. Yeah. Why does it turn into 5x plus 1? What's negative 1 plus 2? Just put like terms together. Negative 1 plus 2 is 3? No, no, no. 1 plus 2 is 3. <laughs> well, no, okay. No, don't you have to add 1? Oh, never mind. I see what you're doing. Never mind. Just okay. Determine. Yeah, just like terms. Sorry. Yeah. It's okay. Once you plug that in, it's a little weird when you learn something a little new. You're concerned that things are going to Once you plug it in, simplify this like a normal thing because that's all it is. It's a normal expression. You simplify it like all like terms go together. What about number 2 there? What's f of g of x? So what am I plugging into f? x squared, x squared plus 2. 5 squared root of x. You guys with me? Second question I asked was, what's f of g of x? So be nicer to yourself. What's f of, what is g of x? x squared plus 2. So what I want to do, I'm going to take x squared plus 2 and put it into f. That's all it says. Whatever this is, put it in. So you write for yourself what the hell that is. And then you go throw it into f. So f looks like square root of 5 times something minus 1. And what's the something? X squared plus like that. Good. If f of x is root 5x minus 1, f of this is root 5 this minus 1. f of Jeff would be root 5 times Jeff minus 1. <laughs> Whatever. Right? Square root of me. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Oh, uh, you can simplify that a little bit, right? What would you get? Plus ten minus one is plus nine. Nine. Cool. That's all right. I swear nine is three, right? No. It's true, but it's not good here, right? No. Good. That, you got to stop it. You can't do anymore. Okay. Yes. What is f? What is the function f? No, what's the function f? So here's what the function f does to anything. And I'm going to take g, and I'm going to throw that in. That's all I'm doing. Because that's what this is. Throw g into f. Okay, so we threw g into f. No problem. And then you just simplify like normal. Once you throw it in, nothing new at all. Distribute, until like terms together, whatever you got to do to simplify it a little bit. This is the cleanup stage. Yes, sir. Could you do another one? Sure, yeah. Yes, sir. So, the one that we just did is completely separate. So, number one, we got that answer for g of f of x. And then f of g of x, I hopefully it makes sense that those would not normally be the same thing. Right? So it makes sense they're completely different answers because I'm plugging a different function into, you know, taking terms. It's going to be different. So the first question was plug f into g. 
So take that thing and put it there. That's what we did. That was for the first that one. That was for the first one. Yeah, plug F into G. So we did it. We took this and we put it there, didn't we? Bam. Yeah. That's what that asked for, right? Plug F into G. G of F of X. Yep, G of F of X. That means plug F inside G. Because where is F? It's inside G. So the symbol is telling you exactly what to do. Take this and put it in there. Why? Because it's in there. That's what it says. So this one said, take G, this whole thing, and throw it into F. And that's what we did here. Cool. And they almost never will be the same answer. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. Or at least all looking this direction. Okay. Um, so here's another one. tells me where to put something. The X is telling me that yeah. marks the spot. That's what tells me where to put something. Put G into G. Put G into G. Don't worry. <laughs> Do what you think it means and then we'll see what it is. You're not being graded yet, so there's no reason need to worry at all. Let's, let's do number one real quick, and then I'll help you get started. Number two, what's the first thing we I, I kind of suggest you do? What am I going to plug into F? And what is G? So I'm going to put this everywhere I see an X in F. That's what I'm going to do. That's what F of X does to something. It puts it up here, minus 7, puts it down there, plus 4. So what's it going to look like now? Good, so I'm going to put this there, and I'm going to put this there also, because there's an X there. Yeah. What does F do to anything? It takes it minus 7, divides it plus 4, right? That's what it does. So it's going to do it no matter what the hell I put in there. So what's it going to do to this? It's going to add subtract 7 from it on the top and add 4 to it on the bottom. And then i got one little cleanup I can do on the top and bottom. Minus 6. Yeah, 2x squared minus 6 over 2x plus 5. 2x squared plus 5. Please don't cancel the 2x squares out, right? <laughs> if I could factor, I could take a 2 out of the top, but then it's not going to go anywhere. So I can't even really factor them, so I can't get parts that would cancel. So I could stop. But if you factored it and, let, and pulled out like a 2 and then an x squared minus 3 on top, of, would that still be correct? Yes, that'd be fun. So let's do that one over there. So, so if you just do that first step, you will let go of G somehow. I'm not sure how to say that without some of you guys going the wrong direction with it. Um, plug G into itself. So what am I going to plug into G? 2x squared plus 1. So what does G do? It takes twice it. Squared plus 1. Isn't that what G does? What does G do? What does G do? So what, what's a... 
Stay with me. A little side note. What's G of 3? To and three and, or three squared. Yes, so whatever the hell is here, it's going to put it right there. So what does it always do? It does twice whatever squared plus one. That's what it always does. Always. So where are you going to put this? Right there. Right? What am I putting into G? I'm putting this thing into G. Alright, let me do this. You guys, this is really important. You need to get over. Huh. Uh, the, la the last thing right there? That's that is Here? the best solution. Yep, because okay. they won't really factor and give me anywhere to cancel anything. Good. All right, let me do this here. Let's see if this helps. So if g of x is 2x squared plus 1. So it's g, what's g of blank space? <laughs> Twice blank space squared plus 1. Is that cool? Yeah. That's the idea. What's g of a? 2a squared plus 1. Right? What's g of uh, 4 plus m? Good, right? Right now. Right? Whatever the hell is here, I'm just going to put it there. That's all. That's all a function means. Please understand this. All a function does. So very single-minded. So function doesn't care if you plug it into itself. It just looks at that like another function. Plug that thing in. So g of 2x squared plus 1 What's it going to do with this? It's going to put it there, right? Yeah. So twice that thing squared plus 1. That's what it does. Twice whatever squared plus 1. That's what it does. That's what G does. That's what they do. <laughs> and then you can simplify that a little bit. Square that out. Double it. Right, so this would be twice... 4x four. Four. Four four. 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 Four squared plus 1. So it'll be 8x4 plus 8x squared plus 2 plus 1 is 3. And this is a downside. That's it? Yeah, I can't really, I can't do anything with that. Even if you could factor it, why would you? Right? There's nothing that would cancel. There's no purpose to it. So that's... That's what G of itself is. Okay. All right. Yes. Well, we're only, you're only having us re break this down because you want us to be able to do this function, not that you want us to be able to substitute function. In other words, you know how you just leave something and just use that function until you have a solution. What you're saying is work it all out. That's why we're learning this. Yes. Okay. In case. So in the real world, this happens Sorry. all the time. Sorry. Trust me, or believe it or not. Uh, if my normal input is x, and then I say, no, I want to double that. Like, x is like uh, the power. I'm plugging in, and I say, no, we're always going to plug in twice as much power as we used to. So I'm going to put in there 2x. So I'll put a 2x in here and see what my output's going to look like now. So what this does is if my inputs, if I want to change all my inputs somehow, change them all, subtract one from all of them, I can put an x minus 1 inside and see what that does to my outputs. So you do this, believe it or not, 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 not you, you don't have to do it to buy the lettuce, but this is done. This is how this works. So we have to understand how this works. And please, I really, it's not uh, as freaky as some of you guys believe. Um, Let's do one more thing here.
So Julian, what, what's h of x? Tell me. h of x, what is it? Good, so what's h of a? Yep. Yeah, if h of x is 2x minus 1 over x, h of a is 2a minus 1 over a, h of 2 is 2 times So this is a roadmap. This is this says if my input's x, I'll double it and then divide one by it. Subtract those. Right. Whatever the hell is there, whatever I put there, that's what you do to it. Period. That's all it is. So when I say h of two, what am I gonna do to it? Plug in two. So it'll be twice two minus one over two. Now that is super old news. That part we should have actually no problem with. I think the rest of it's kind of screwing with their head right now, but that's that's all a function means. Whatever number I put in there, I put it into the function. That's what it means. So then, of course, I get three halves. Three and a half. Good. So four minus one half is three and a half, or seven halves, however you want to put it. Cool. Yes. So the last one switch them. Let's get there. Hold on. So what do I do here? Yeah, plug in x plus 4 into h. So what does h do to anything? It doubles it and subtracts 1 divided by it. And it is x plus 4. So it doubles it minus 1 over it. And then you can simplify just a little bit. Just distribute. No, you have to do all that. We could get common denominators, but there's no purpose. Uh, it depends on what should we do next, and what will we do next? The next problem. So there's nothing next, right? If this equals something, maybe I want to do that. This is part of an equation, but I can just stop right here. That's what h of x plus 4 is. Really? We don't. <laughs> there's no reason. It's not an equation. I don't have to solve for x. That's fine. If you wanted to, you could multiply top and bottom of this by x plus 4. x plus 4, get LCD if you wanted to. So you're just changing the form, but why? Why? Why would you do that? There's no need. It's not an equation. Practice. I love it. Practice is always good. Here's combined. Practicing. But there's no need for it here. So that last one, now really, look at this one. How could I have question, How could I have put this question instead of this? What is x plus 4? H of g of x. In this case. Yeah, I could have said what's h of g of x. That's how that could have started. Because g of x is this. h of g of x would be h of that, which is my question. So my question could have been this. I would have done the same work. Because they say the same damn thing. What is g? This? Okay. So this last one, what does G do to anything? <coughs> it adds 4 to it. So if it's G of X, it would add 4 to X. If it's G of A, it would add 4 to A. Whatever is in here is what it adds 4 to. So what am I, what am I putting inside of it? What am I putting into it? H. And what is H of X? That mess, right? So do you see how this problem looks like it's going to be so bad? But what does G do to anything? It just adds four. I, I really don't care. I could put the ugliest thing in the world here. You just rewrite it, and at the end of it, put press four. Because that's all G does. Whatever I put into it, and what am I putting into it? H of X. H of X is this. So what does G do to anything? 2X minus 1 over X adds four to it. That's it. Because there's no like terms. You can get an LCD again if you want to, with no purpose, no real reason. Yes, ma'am. Would it be wrong if you left the parentheses in the 2x line? No, it wouldn't be wrong. In fact, it's kind of nice because you can see the form of it. G of something is something plus 4. There it is. That's what G does. G of something is something plus 4. So I can see the form. Yes, sir. Um, when we actually do these, we have to actually solve them out, correct? 
How do you solve them? I only solve what kind of things. And this is not an equation. If I said, find where h of g of x equals 7, that would be this equals 7. I'd have to solve it then, right? But this is not an equation. This is just an expression I want to simplify. But we will be seeing those in, in this, right? What's that? We'll be seeing solve. You've seen those already. <laughs> not. Do you guys remember that there's a problem like this? Like that and it said find where g of t equals negative one. And a lot of you guys put a negative one inside. That's not what it asks. It says where's g of t equal to negative one? Well, what is g of t? Negative one. To substitute. What is g of t? G of t is this. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's an equation because it's saying when is this equal to a number? That's an equation. I've got to solve it. This is just saying what is this function? It doesn't say make this function equal five. It says, what is this function? That's what that function is. Okay, next. If it said, find where this function equals five, I'd have to equal this to five and then solve it. Okay, good. Hopefully. Didn't you just put negative one into that? Two. Yeah, that was a problem from before. That was a, a homework problem. So maybe some of you guys remember that. Or not, you guys kind of like wipe your slate clean. Um, so you don't put a negative one in. It's not saying t is negative one. It's saying g of t is negative one. So it's, you have to do this whole thing. All right, you can subtract that square both sides, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So that was to answer the question about would you ever see, yes, if they told you, take this function and make it equal this number. That's an equation. That's what an equation is. Okay. Guys like, oh, good. Chapter 14. It's going to be a little bit more interesting. Is that really? it? Huh? Is that it for chapter 14? No, no, no. That's the first part. <laughs> Don't get too excited. Um, so, real, one last thing on this. If I have h of x, what's that? h of 3 would be. Tell me what I would do. Don't do it. 3 minus 1. Yeah, 3 minus 1. 3 squared plus 2. 3 squared plus 2, right? That's what h of 3 would be. Because it takes whatever's here, puts it there and there. So whatever's here, puts it there and there. So then what would h of uh, 2 minus t be? 2 minus, 2 minus 2 minus 1. 2 minus t minus 1 over 2 minus t squared plus 2. You see how no matter what this is, this is going to have the form something minus 1, something squared plus 2. Something minus 1, something squared plus 2. Why does it have that form? Because that's what it says it does. It takes something minus 1, some, that same thing squared plus 2. That's what it does. Right? Hopeful. So, I mean, if I came in and I said, okay, well, g of, that, g of t is 2 minus t. Right? Here's what h is. Here's what h of x is. There's what g of t is. You guys kind of with me? That's just another function. This question could have started off as, what is h of g of t? Because what's g of t? That thing. So really, if you guys can do that, it looks like more of you can do that than this, well then I hope you just realized, well, that you just did that. Right? Now some of you guys are like, I can't even do that shit. But that's, you better come see me. <laughs> It's not that bad. That's not bad. Okay. Um, the next idea is a slightly more important idea, believe it or not. It's an idea we use, you've used ever since you started to learn how to solve equations. So if I were to solve this equation, what do I do? I do the inverse function of addition. Inverse meaning opposite, right? What's the opposite of addition? Subtraction. Subtraction. If I want to solve this equation, square. Square. Because squaring and square rooting are inverse functions, right? And that can keep going. And when you take trigonometry, you learn this sign, and then you, you to solve it, you got to do the opposite sign and, and cancel it out. I mean, you can't divide by it. It's not sin. You can divide the sin out. 
So you have to apply the opposite of sine somehow. So whenever you learn a new function, you have to learn its opposite or else you could never solve an equation with it in it. Is that cosine? No. The cosine, they're kind of like partners. That's why it's the sine plus. It would actually be Maybe just sine. inverse sine. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll let you guys, don't worry about that yet. You know, like, dude, we're on shaky ground here. Don't pull in any freaking functions we don't even know yet. Okay, sorry. Um, so that's the idea of inverse. So let's really explore something about this. Um, so if f of x is... Well, actually, let me see. Which way do I want to do this? Yeah, let's do this this way. I don't know. I'll do it graphically first. This is how we normally do things. We do graphically, and then we do it algebraically. Visually, exactly. So if I had a function f, here I got f of x. Let me give it a few points here. I'm going to make it a very kind of linear function, something like that, there, that, and then uh, let's make this more. Yeah, that's fine. Let's make one more. Screw it. There's plenty of points. So I got this here and that there. Very interesting function. All right, so this is f of x. So far, so that's f of x. If I want to know the opposite of it, which means if I put the, so for example, if I have, uh, to do a little bit of algebra to help us out, if I have f of x equals x cubed, what would its inverse function be? Good. And the symbol for inverse function, unfortunately, is this. And I say it's unfortunate because it almost looks like it means 1 over. It's not, it doesn't mean reciprocate. This means inverse of f. Yes, sir? Does that mean opposite of, or it just means inverse? It, it means opposite, yes. Okay. So inverse and opposite are, are basically the same thing. Okay. So what would the inverse function be? What's the opposite of cubing something? Cube root. Cube root. So watch what happens if I make a table of values. Can it help us think about this visually? Watch what happens if I make a table of values for f. Help me make a table of values for f. What would you plug into f? Zero. Zero is a good one. What do you get out? Zero. 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 One. 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 So far, not too interesting. Nine. What about eight? Two. Two. Twenty-seven. What about twenty-seven? Yeah. Three. And I could do all the negatives of those and get the same. So just negative. You with me? So we won't do that. We already know what that would be. So look at f inverse. What numbers can I take the cube root of? What did I just do? Oh, this is f inverse. We did the cube root function first. Right? What about if I cube stuff? So what if I put in there 0? What do I get? 1. What if I put 2 in? 2 cubed is? Hey, what if we put a 3 in? So how, in fact, isn't this always going to happen? If I take a function and it's inverse, the inverse means if I take an output of this function, it's going to come back to its input. It's going to, it's going to undo whatever it did. Whatever f does to 2, f inverse is going to undo it. So what does f do to 2? Makes it 8. F inverse would take 8 and make it back to 2. It undoes whatever was done. How are we doing so far? So any functions you tell me, the inverse table is going to just be the reverse of the original table. Right? All the outputs of this guy are going to go right back to what their inputs were. Okay, let me stop right there for a second. It might be my choice of words. But if I cube 3, I get 27. If I cube root 27, I get 3. So an inverse function will always take the output of the original and bring it back to what the input was. It will undo whatever was done. Okay? So that's almost too simple of an idea. That's what inverse means. You're going to undo what the other guy did. So visually, this is kind of cool. Every point in the table, this is going to work always. This is always going to work if I have two inverse functions. 
every point, this goes to the point one one, that goes to point one. This one goes to point eight two, which means the opposite function has to go through the point two eight, so forth. So how would I draw f inverse? Just flip it, go down. See. Kind of so what's backwards. this point? The same. What's the point? Uh, negative three zero. Negative three zero. So what point? So so f goes through negative three zero. It also goes through. One, one. Zero, one. Zero, 1. And it also goes through 2, 3. So what's f inverse going to do? 0, 0, 3. Yeah, f inverse is going to go 0, negative 3. 1, 0. 3, 2. It's going to have to. Whatever f did to negative 3, it made it 0. f inverse is going to undo that. It's going to go from 0 back to negative 3. It's going to undo it. So then how would I graph it? I just plot those reverse points. So how do you plot the 0, negative 3 would be there. 1, 0, there. 3, 2, so they're there. Never, they're never going to touch. They would touch if they went through a certain line. Can anybody see from my crappy picture, uh, albeit crappy picture, where the mirror is between f and f inverse? Zero. We have an idea of mirror because we're talking about axis of symmetry. It's not here, obviously. That's crazy. It's going to have to be diagonal somehow. And actually, it's exactly y equals x. That's where the mirror is. It's kind of cool to see that visually, to see that happen. So there's a mirror right at y equals x. Why does that make sense? Because what do I do to all the points from a function to its inverse? What do I do to the points? I flip them. So x and y flip. So the whole thing visually is going to flip over the y equals x line. Maybe. Because what we're about to do is we're going to talk about a certain kind of function. We're going to learn a new function today. And what did I say earlier? Whenever you learn a new function, you must learn its opposite so I can solve equations with it in there. If I didn't know the opposite of addition, I could never solve the equation x plus 7 equals a. I just can't. Okay, cool. That's very interesting. Um, <clears throat> so what does this mean algebraically? So I know how to find an inverse visually. How do I find an inverse function algebraically? Exactly its opposite. Exactly its opposite. Yes. Okay. So if I had a very simple function, like twice x, what's the inverse of that? Half of x. Exactly. x over 2 or half of x, right? Of course it is, because what's the opposite of doubling something, cutting something in half? Ooh. So very simple functions, I don't have to do what I'm about to do. I can just see it. But if I have a slightly more complicated function, let's say f of x equals uh, 2x cubed minus... Uh, 11. And I want to find its inverse. I know it's going to have to do what kind of things? The inverse is going to have to do the op all the opposite stuff I see up there, right? So instead of cubing, it's going to have to have a cube root. Instead of doubling, it's going to have to cut half. Instead of subtracting 11, it's going to have to... It's just like, what order does it do it in? So here's what we do. This is kind of nifty. What does f of x take the place of that we always use otherwise? Y. Cool. So put the y back in there. Uh, I like this for several reasons. And I don't know if you're going to like it for any reason, but let's find out. Visually, what do I do to, tr to find f inverse? I just switch x and y. Algebra goes, keep x. I'll do the same thing. Because what are x and y are the points. So if I plug something in for x, I'm going to get something out for y. The inverse would just flip those. So I'm hoping to God, let's see. Just solve it. All I got to do algebraically then is the same thing, except instead of doing it for individual points, I do it for every point. I just take x and y and switch them. 
So what I always do is I draw a little line here, and I'll tell you why in a second. That is all I do, and then I solve for y. Here's the next level of why I like this. And you, know, and you like all the math. Okay, you got me there, but does that make sense by itself? Let me just stop right there. If this makes sense, switch the x and y to get that, and that makes sense because they just do whatever one did, the other one takes it back. That's why the point switches. Algebra says, cool, I'm going to switch all the points, just like you did, visual representation. So now if I solve for y, now here's the next level. What did we just say has to happen in the new inverse function? It's got to do the, all the opposite operations. Well, how am I going to solve for y? I'm going to do all the opposite freaking operations to solve for it, aren't I? Yeah. So what, what's the first thing to solve for y? Plus 11. Plus 11. So I'm doing the opposite of subtracting 11. What's the next step? Divide by 2. Divide by 2. And then cube root. All right, let me take this up here. So we start here. So divide by 2. Take a cube root. So get y equals cube root x plus 11 over 2. Now, if f of x is this, what can I replace y with? What is this? Of f. Good, f inverse. That's the opposite of f. It does everything we thought it would. We just, it's hard to tell exactly what order it's going to be, and actually turns out to be exactly the opposite order of what the function was. But we knew it had a cube root somewhere, we knew it had an add 11 somewhere, we knew it had to divide by 2 somewhere, and there it all is. So that process works for any function that you actually can invert. So where's the new function you're learning? It's not here yet. Oh, okay. You're not done with this yet. Um, the statement I just made, I don't know if any of you keyed in on it, you cannot do this for every function. So somebody remind me, what's the visual definition that goes along with it? Uh, the verbal definition of function. What is the definition of function? Can somebody, well, how would I draw something that's not a function? What would I have to have happen? Uh, it can't cross the same So this would not be a function because it does not pass the oh, yeah, that's right. vertical line test. That vertical line corresponds to that x value, doesn't it? So the definition of function is any x input can't have more than one output. There can only be one, remember? Mm -hmm. Highlander. There can only be one. <laughs> okay, cool. You with me? Mm -hmm. But, so for example, a, a regular parabola, so this is not a function. A regular parabola, is that a function? Yes, yes this is totally a function. The problem is, if I want to get the inverse, that means if I have an output, I have to know exactly where it came from. Let me say that again. What does an inverse function do? It takes the outputs of the original and brings it right back to what the input was. So if I said I have an output of 4, can you tell me exactly what the input was for this parabola, for this y equals x squared? If I have an output of 4, what was the input? 2, 2. What was it? Minus it might have been 2. It might have been negative 2. So can you tell me exactly what it was? No, you can't. So this is an example of something that's not invertible. This has no inverse. And the really, I want to, I want to see if you guys get this. So you all, in order for an inverse to exist, you must always be able to find your way back to where you came from. So if I know something squared is 4, I don't know exactly where it came from. It could have come from 2, it could have come from negative, I don't know. So I can't trace my steps back. Visually, we could have kick ass things. So this is the vertical line test for a function, right? For a function that has passed the vertical line test, every x can have only one output. For an inverse function to exist, if I took 
this parabola and did visually to it what we know we have to do. So if I took this parabola, how would I graph its inverse? I just said it didn't have one, but we're going to see why. What would I do to get its inverse? I would flip it over that y equals x line. So I would get this. Is that a function? No, because no, it doesn't pass the vertical line. So instead of actually doing that, if that doesn't pass the vertical line test, instead of actually drawing that, I can just do what kind of test here? If that's a vertical line test, before I flip it, I could just do a horizontal. Okay, cool. Vertical line test means you're a function if you pass it. If you pass a horizontal line test, that means you have an inverse function. So the one we just did, Q, does it have an inverse? Yeah, we found the damn thing, right? So that means if I look at a cube function that looks like this, the basic one, does that pass the horizontal line test? Yes. It only goes through horizontal lines, only go through at most once. So cool, that goes along. We found an inverse because an inverse exists. But if I try to do it for a parabola, I can't. And it's very quick. If I look at y equals x squared, how do you solve for x? The minute you do that, what do you have to do? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. So I get x equals plus or minus. There's two options. That's why there's no inverse. There's too many options. Yeah. So is it just x squared? And x Anything that does not pass the horizontal line test will not have an inverse. So parabola is just the quickest thing that doesn't. Right. Circle. Is a circle a function? No. no. Would it have an inverse? No, it doesn't pass any damn test, right? So any function that does not pass our line test, you can't find an inverse for it, right? So later, in, if you have a function that looks like this, is it a function? Yes. Does it have an inverse? Hell no. It definitely doesn't pass a horizontal line test, right? Okay, cool. All right, so let me summarize what we've done so far, all right, because we've done a lot. So graphically, given f of x, switch points. We're still in 14.1. 14.1 talks about two things, composition. So that whole first part of the class was talking about one thing. It's the same idea, I don't care what it is, it's the same idea. And then inverse. Again, same idea, I don't care what it is, same idea. So there's only two things in section 13, 14.1. It's taken me a long time to talk about them, that's fine. So given f of x, I just switched the point. So f of x has x, y. f inverse would have y, x. That's visually, that's how you do it. Algebraically, algebraically you just switch x and y in the in the equation. This is the overview of what we just did. So if I give you uh, an equation, a function, you switch the x and y and then solve again for y. That's what we just did right there. All right, so that's how you can find an inverse algebraic. So graphically, this is how you find an inverse. Algebraically, you actually do exactly the same damn thing. You switch the x and the y. So I wanted to start there. And then you say, OK, here's something I actually want to do before I would do any of this is, does an inverse exist? So in order for an inverse to exist, In order for f of inverse to exist, what must be true about f of x? Must pass the uh, horizontal line test. Horizontal line test, cool. Because it's just the vertical line test if I flipped it. So I go, instead of flipping the damn thing, I'm going to flip my test. That kind of makes neat sense. So one thing we could do, if we have a function like a parabola, now now nobody yelled about this, and it's probably because you're all sitting there in shock, but 
If I have a parabola, I know the opposite of squaring is square, square rooted. So they should still be somehow related. So what I would have to do, so you guys get this, what I would have to do is I'd have to restrict the domain. If I could erase part of this, what could I erase so that it would be invertible, so that it would pass the horizontal line test? When I just erase like that, right? So I'm, I'm some kind of god, and I reach down parabola in half. You know? So now I've got this. Does it pass the horizontal line test? Yes. yes. So this is y equals x squared, but the domain would be x greater than or equal to zero. zero. So if I restrict the domain, the inverse of this would be the square root of x. And you could restrict it either way. Yeah, exactly. I could restrict it either way that I need to. That's just one way I could do it. I could have cut the positive half off, and it would still be hard passing the horizontal line test. So, and again, looking back at the, this function here, it goes forever like that. So I'm going to have to do a lot of erasing. But I could erase to there, and I could erase to there, and now it passes the horizontal line test, right? So if, you if you're going to take trig, well, if you were with me, I'll remind you of this. But think about what I just did. It's going to come back to you. It's going to go, oh, shit, we just didn't get that in that So it's adding restrictions. Yeah, if you add restrictions to a function that does not pass this test, you can make it pass the test. <coughs> and then it can have the inverse at once. Okay. All right, so that's that. So here, let me give you guys a couple to try, and then we'll take a break. What's the first step here? Good, bring the Y back in. 
Good, switch the X and the Y. How you doing there? You still okay. And the reason I put this little line in there, you don't have to do that, it just tells me that what I did from this step to this step is not algebraic, it's conceptual. So I didn't actually do any algebra to it. Oh yeah, I don't care. But that's why I put that for, for myself. Because there's no way to go algebraically from here to here, just no freaking way. And now resolve for Y, so what's the first thing to do there? Yes, subtract seven. Power. Good. Fifth power. I can't add one right now. I can't break into that root. So fifth power so I can free that up. Please, dear God, don't actually do this. <laughs> right? It's a waste of time. You guys are like, oh, I'll stop right now. Good. Just cancel. Good. And then just add one. So I get y equals x minus 7 to the fifth plus 1. Good, so I can replace y with f inverse, because that's what that is. It's the inverse of f. And why does it make sense that this would have an inverse? What does an odd root look like? Or what a cube root looks like? Like a square root, but it has a negative part, right? So that definitely passes the horizontal line test. You with me? It definitely passes the horizontal line test, so therefore I knew this would have an inverse. <laughs> So what about part B? Part B gets interesting. It's really short and quick. So bring the Y back in. Then I switch X and Y. How do we solve for Y? Multiply, you multiply yeah. by Y. And whenever you're trying to solve for a variable that's on the bottom of something, the first thing you do is you free the hell, free it up. Multiply by it, so you can free it up. So multiply by y, I get y x equals two. Divide by x, I get y equals two over x. So the inverse of two over x is two over x. Kick ass. And real quick, um, what does that mean about this function visually? Let me see, you guys. If it's if it's a, its own inverse. That means if I took it and I flipped it around y equals x, it has to land right back on top of itself. So this function actually looks like this. That's what 2 over x basically looks like. Right? Very rough sketch. So sure enough, if I, if I flip that, doesn't it just flip right back on top of itself? So anytime a function is its own inverse, it means it has that kind of symmetry to its graph, symmetric to that line. Yeah? So you... Multiply it by y to go on the other side. Couldn't you can't divide it by two? You could, but then it wouldn't help you. You try to solve for y, and your y is on the bottom. You can't solve for it as long as it's on the bottom. So the first thing you do is you, you take care of that problem. All right, I got you. So if if that looks like, but that doesn't pass the diagonal line test. Doesn't what do you mean? Oh wait, those are two separate. Never mind. Passes, yeah. Never mind, I got it. They're two separate equations. Yeah, they're not on top of each other. They're not next to each other, so it passes the vertical and horizontal. <laughs> so let's take a break. Come back, Tinsel.